the parable of the sower. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to the disciples, it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the heavenly kingdom. But for those people, for other people, it was given to them in parables. So what is a parable? Explains what? The mysteries of the heavenly kingdom. So we are now getting into a parable which explains the mysteries of the heavenly kingdom. Yeah? The mysteries of the heavenly kingdom is hidden in that parable. So what we need is to pay attention to the parable, is to understand what the parable means so that we discover the mysteries behind it, the mystery of the heavenly kingdom. The first thing we, uh, the first thing we notice about the heavenly kingdom, that heavenly kingdom starts from very small thing. Starts from what? Seeds. Seeds. Are finished seeds? How small it is? Very small. But when it, is, it falls on the ground, it becomes what? Big trees. Big trees. So the mystery of the heavenly kingdom starts as small and the grow, grow and grow till it becomes so big. The other thing is the mystery of the heavenly kingdom. <coughs> it's a mystery. It is a hidden thing. It's a hidden thing. That is why the seed has to be hidden has to go deep on the ground, has to be buried in the ground so that it would be fruitful. And that is why David the prophet and the king said, I have hidden your word into my heart so that I would not sin against you. So the mystery is a hidden thing. The seed has to be hidden into our hearts so that it would be fruitful. Yeah? So the first thing, it is small and it grows. The second thing, it has to be hidden then it will give fruits. And the third thing that the heavenly kingdom, the mystery of the heavenly kingdom has to be has to be Fruitful, fruitful, has to be fruitful. If there is no fruits, there is no life. And of course, 
the heavenly kingdom is the Lord himself, is the word of God, the living word of God. And this living word of God, if we really take it, hide it inside, it will grow and it will be fruitful. And when it is fruitful, it will bring 30 and 60 and 100 <coughs> percent. Let us, let us find out some The Bible tells us the sower, the sower here in this parable is who? Is God. And the seeds are the word of God. Pay attention that the seeds is for everyone in the world. The seeds are getting to the wayside, to the rockery soil, to the thorny soil, as well as to the good soil. So what that does mean, God is just. God loves the whole world equally and making sure that his word, his seed, will reach to each one. So what is the mystery here? The mystery here hides God's love, God's love to, to the whole world, and God's love to every one of us. It is full, complete. It is not differentiating between the worst sinner and to the great saints. But the difference is in the response. The difference is in the response. The difference is how do we respond to the word of God? Yes? <clears throat> the first soil, the sower through the seeds, through the seeds, spread the seeds on the soil. But the soil is a wayside. What that does it mean, wayside? How, how a cultivating land will turn into a wayside? How? When the cultivating land is used in different way. Yani if we all walk on the good soil, it will be what? It will kill the plants. It will be like a road. So wayside means like a road open to everyone. People will go Animals will go, cars will go, machines will go. So it has been not giving the seeds the chance to go in and to be watered and to be fruitful. It is 
way. Sayyid means open to everything. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is bad. Anything goes. And we notice the way Sayyid as well, it is always higher, higher than the cultivating land. Yani, if you go on the motorway here, yeah, you find the motorway higher than the, the cultivating land. It simply means I am not I am not in need of the seeds, but I am in need for everything else, which means simply that this wayside symbolizing the pride, the pride of man, man who is proud, yeah, is higher than the seeds, cannot give fruits. The birds will come and take, the birds will come and take these seeds away. When the birds come, the birds is like Satan. He takes the word of God away from us. So we will stay in our pride, higher than the seeds, and open to the world. This is the first soil. The second soil The second soil is when it is rookery. Yani e rookery, what that does mean rookery? It means it lacks moisture. It lacks moisture. So the surface is moisture but the bottom is hard. That is why the top is different than the depth. That is what we call it hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. When, you, when the sower threw the seeds, it brought some fruits, not fruits, yani it started to uh, blossom, but it was not deep enough, deep enough, because it was rookery from inside. This hypocrisy, it means the outside is different than the inside. We say something and we don't mean it. We show care, but inside we are not really caring. This is hypocrisy. And the hypocrisy is a pitfall for many, many people, many people, like the Pharisee and the tax collector. A Pharisee went into the temple, went into the front, and kept saying to the Lord, thank you, Lord, I tie my money, I fast, I pray, 
and I am not like that tax collector. You know what? The Bible tells us that Pharisee went out unjustified. The tax collector who could not get in because he felt he doesn't deserve it and was honest and revealed himself before the Lord was justified, forgiven. God hates hypocrisy. God hates hypocrisy. He says, woo, woo to you, hypocrites. Woo to you, hypocrites. The worst sin, and it hides lots of problems, is hypocrisy. The third thing is when the Bible tells us that it is the thorny one, thorny one. A thorny soil means it's a good soil and the seeds go deep and it brings some fruits. But because it is thorny, the thorns suffocate the plant. The thorns suffocate the plants. It means the thorns suffocating the seeds and making it to be unfruitful. What are the thorns? The thorns are the love of the world. The love of the world. If uh, we have pride in the first soil, hypocrisy in the second soil, and love of the world in the third soil. The love of the world, it means simply like what St. Paul said about Demas. Demas left me why? Because he loved the world. He loved the world. Loving the world simply means taking the pleasures of the world. Taking and accepting the pleasures of the world against the God. Against the God. It simply means that Satan deceives me. Like when Satan went to Adam and Eve and tricked them, saying, can you see these fruits? Because when you eat it, you will be like God. And you will be great. But God doesn't like you, so he wants you always to be underneath him. He wants you to be undermined. And they trusted Satan. And they looked at the fruits and they found it delicious to look at and to eat. And that is why they took the fruit and they ate it. But it was not 
pleasure is. It has hidden in it death. And Adam and Eve died. This is the pleasure of the world. The pleasure of the world is our beloved sins. Our beloved sins. Our beloved sins has, have got always a deception. It gives me a pleasure, but it takes my life away. It takes it gives me temporary pleasure and it destroys my eternity. This thorny, this thorny soil is a serious problem in many of us. We love God. We love the word of God and we want to be godly but we allow the thorns to get into our life and suffocate the word of God. Every one of us has got different thorn in his life. Some will have the love of money. Some will have, have lustful thoughts and lustful feelings and actions. Some have love for themselves and selfishness. We are different in our thoughts. But be careful, thorns suffocate the word of God. Unless I take the thorns out, I will not be saved. It has to be taken out. And the third one, and the fourth soil, is the good soil. Yeah. The good soil the good soil gives fruits thirty, sixty and one hundred. Thirty, sixty and one hundred. Yeah. Probably the thirty are normal believers. They will be saved. And if you want to more, it's when you serve. And when you want to more and more, is when you give your life for God and be dedicated for God. Be dedicated for God. Yeah? But I want you to, at the end, yeah, to notice these three things. You need to hear, to hear the word of God, and you need to understand To hear and understand, it simply means to take it and hide it inside. Digest it inside. I have hidden your word into my heart so that I would not sin against you. We want For every soil, something to do. The first soil is pride. So we need to be what? Humble. No proud 
which people will go to heaven. Only humble people go to heaven. The second soil is hypocrisy. We need to be honest, faithful, trustworthy. And the church arranged that every one of us confess his sins. Every one of us goes to the Father of confession and confess to the Lord, open his life to the Lord, saying to the Lord, here I am with all my weaknesses, with all my sins. Please forgive me and purify me. Those who don't those who don't confess their sins, they keep their sins in. They look nice from outside, but they are caring about the sins inside. This is hypocrisy. And it would never save us. You can deceive the whole people, but not God. You can be very successful on, the, on earth, but not in heaven. So hypocrisy needs to be honest, to be as you are, to make what is inside like outside. The thorny one, the thorny one needs to pick up the thorns, to purify yourself all the time, to examine yourself and fix the thorns out, pull it out, otherwise it will suffocate your life. It is very practical when we all say with the Lord, for them, for our children, for our families, for those who are around us, for the Lord himself, we purify ourselves so that they will be sanctified in the truth. You know why our children go unfruitful? You know why our children love the world? Because we could not sanctify ourselves so that they will be sanctified in the truth. It is a call for all parents to sanctify themselves for their own children to be sanctified. Vivid example of thorns is like Daniel. You know Daniel? Uh, so Samson. You know Samson? When Samson went to Gaza, and in Gaza he found the pleasure, Delilah. And he lived with Delilah, and he stayed with Delilah, and forgot about Jerusalem, and forgot about the temple of the Lord. And the thorns grew in Samson's life. And he, the Lord revealed for him, she is deceiving him, but he did not make a decision 
to take the sword out and go back to Jerusalem. Though the Lord revealed it for him twice, but he didn't care. He thought he is stronger than Satan, and he lost his eyes. Vanity, vanity of vanity. It is all vanity. And what? Holding the air. Holding the air. Vanity of vanity, it is all vanity and the holding the air. That is the pleasures of the world. It doesn't worse to lose your eternity for it. We wanted to know a mystery here that the wayside can turn into rockery and the rockery can turn into thorn and the, rock, the wayside, the rockery and the thorn can turn into a good soil. Even if you are a wayside, you still have the chance to be a good soil. Even if you are rockery or thorny soil, you still have the chance to be a good soil. Ham. It is water and feeding. It is water feeding and purifying your soil. Enough water, enough food, and careful purification that your soil will be changed and your soil will be good and fruitful. May our Lord Jesus Christ give us all to be fruitful, to be fruitful. Please, Ask yourself, am I fruitful or not? If you are not, work on yourself from now. Work on yourself from now. Be humble. Water your soil. Put composite and fertilizer in it. Hide the word of God into your heart so that it will be fruitful and take away the thorns in repentance and confessions. Then your soil will be good. May the Lord give us all to be good soils. Glory to God forever.